Welcome. It's often considered a standard part of the Algebra 2 curriculum in high school to have kids fit quadratics to data. What do I mean by that? Well, we give kids a problem of the following ilk. Here are some data values. This draws a table. When x is 1, I'd like y to be 5, please. When x is 4, I'd like an output of 2. And when x is 10, I'd like an output of, say, 50. Can you find a quadratic that fits that data precisely? Graphically, that means I'm trying to find a U-shaped curve that goes to the point 1, 5, and the point 4, uh, let's see, 2, and the point 10, ooh, way up, should be up high, 50. That is, find me a lovely quadratic that produces a nice parabola that fits this data. Well, how do we normally have kids do this? Uh, I guess most books have the kids do the following. Let's plug in x equals 1 into this generic formula. So we get that a plus b plus c equals 5. That's the output we want. Plug in now x equals 4. That tells me 16a plus 4b plus c should be 2. And now plug in x equals 10. That tells me 100a plus 10b plus c should be 50. That gives me three equations and three unknowns. Uh, that's really a problem from linear algebra. Uh, I guess most books don't teach kids Gaussian elimination, so what we most, most people do is have kids plug that into a calculator in a matrix and perform this mysterious matrix inverse and have the calculator just tell you the answer. Um, that's fine and dandy, but it's mysterious and, and not very fulfilling. I, I propose that we just have do a different approach. Let's just have kids write down the answer and let me show you how. Let me give you the answer. Here's a quadratic that goes to that data. I'm just going to write it down right now on the top of my head. All right. I claim 5 times x minus 4 times x minus 10 all over negative 3 times negative 9 plus 2 times x minus 1 x minus 10 all over 3 times negative 6 plus, uh, let's see, 50 times x minus 1 times x minus 4 all over 9 times 6, that's a 9 there, does the trick. Okay, I admit that looks frightening and ghastly. All right, before I analyze it, do you at least admit it's a quadratic? If I were to expand this out to be something with x squareds plus something with an x term plus a constant term. All right, conceptually, this is a piece of cake, though visually it is a mess, I do admit. But let, let's play with it, let's play with it. I claim when you put x equals 1 into this formula, out pops an output of 5. And I've done this in a way, you can sort of see the three outputs sitting here. So obviously I've got three terms. And if you look at this, let's put an x equals 1. I've designed it so this middle term vanishes when x equals 1. Do you see I'll have 0 in this numerator? I've also designed this third term to vanish when x equals 1. So the only term into play when x is 1 is this first term. When I put in x equals 1, the numerator is actually 1 minus 4 times 1 minus 10. But I've designed the denominator to be exactly matching the numerator in this case. So when x is 1, I have 5 times 27 over 27, 5 times 1. So this, this quadratic gives me 5 times 1 plus 0 plus 0 as an output. When x is 1, the output is indeed 5. Let's try that for x equals 4. And look what I've done. I've arranged it so this first term vanishes at x equals 4. Put it in 4, the numerator goes away. This third term vanishes for x equals 4. The only term that survives is the middle term. And what have I done with the numerator and the denominator? Well, when x is 4, the numerator is going to be 3, 4 times minus 1, times 4 minus 10, 3 times negative 6. I've designed the denominator to completely match that. So when x is 4, I have 0 plus 2 times 1 plus 0. The output is indeed 2. And finally, it's very easy to see that I've designed a polynomial so that when x is 10, the output is 50. Because when x is 10, this first term vanishes, 10 minus 10, goes away. When x is 10, the second term vanishes, it goes away. The only term that survives is this third term. And when x is 10, the numerator is 9, 10 minus 1, times 10 minus 4, 9 times 6, which is exactly the denominator I wrote down. So the numerator and denominator cancel each one then out, so all I have is 50 times 1, 0 plus 0 plus 50. Yes, indeed, I have an output of 50. So this visually messy nightmare of a quadratic is actually very easy to understand conceptually. It's designed to do the trick. Now, I can work on it and do a little bit of algebra here. Um, at the very least, I can do the following. I really have 5 times uh, 1 27th. So I have 5 27th times x minus 4 times x minus 10. And I have 2 and, uh, what's that, negative 18. So that's negative 1 ninth x minus 1, x minus 10. 
and 50, oh, let's make this 25 and 3 because I get a 27 then. So I really got plus 25 27 x minus 1, x minus 4. I'd like I could actually write this middle term as negative 3 27 um, Now it's just hop, skip, and a jump, basic algebra. Um, if you have the patience, I can see actually if the x squared term here is going to be 5 27 the x squared term here is going to be negative 3 27 and the x squared term here is going to be 25 27 that's a 5 minus 3, that's an additional 2 27 and 20, that's 27 27 of the x squared term. In fact, it's just a single x squared and a little bit of thought is negative 6 x's I believe and I think it's going to be plus 10. I think you can see that quadratic is this simple one in disguise. All right, so there is a little bit of work. If you wish to go to this, this final form, okay, messy algebra, doable algebra, but at least conceptually I know exactly what I'm doing. It's much better to me than the black box of a calculator. All right, piece of cake. Let's just uh, do another one. Let's really firm up this idea. If you want a quadratic that fits some data, just write it down. Here goes. Let's try an example. I'll make this up on the spot. X, Y. Uh, when x is negative 3, I'd like an output of 5, please. When x is 5, I'd like an output of half. And when x is, I don't know, 110, please give me an output of 7. Here's the quadratic that's going to do the trick. All right, let's deal with an output of 5 first when x is negative 3. I'd like this term to vanish at 5 and at 10. All right, but when x is negative 3, I need to counteract this numerator. So when x is negative 3, I'll need a negative 8 on the bottom and I'll need a negative 13. Great, first term done. Now I'd like an output of a half. I'd like that to occur when x is 5, so I want it to vanish for x equals negative 3, and to vanish for when x is 110. Whoops, that's meant to be 110, the beginning term, I'm sorry. Whoops. Ooh, that means it's going to change here. So, uh, ooh, I've messed this up for you. I'm so sorry. Uh, when x is uh, negative 3, it's going to be negative 113. Sorry. Back to the middle term. Oops, I'm a goof already. X is 5, I want a term of 8 to counteract x equals 5, and a term of negative 105 to counteract. And finally, the third term, when x is 7, I'd like to counteract x being negative 3, counteract x being negative 5, being 5, leaving me with just uh, x equals 110 of interest, which means I need 113 on the bottom, and I need 105 on the bottom. There it is. There's a quadratic that does the trick. Actually, you know, there's nothing unique about quadratics here. Suppose I give you four data points, and you want a cubic that fits that data. Piece of cake. Just write it down. Here goes. Um, I won't do all the gory details, because I think the idea is simple. 1, 2, 3, 8. Suppose I want 7, 3, 1, negative 5. Here comes my cubic. Um, I want an output of 7 to vanish at x equals 2, vanish at x equals 3, and to vanish at x equals 8. When x is actually 1, I need a denominator to counteract the effects of x being 1, so I need negative 1, negative 2, negative 7. Plus I want an output of 3, I want that to vanish at x equals 1, x equals 3, and x equals 8, but survive when x equals 2, so I need a denominator that counts, counteracts x being 2, 1, negative 1, negative 6, and so on. I need two more terms. That was very fast, but very swift to write down. Uh, we can even write the equation of a line this way if we wish. Why not? Let's have fun. Whoops, let's get the uh, pen back. X, Y, suppose I give you just two data points. 1, 3, 5, 11 or something. Um, here comes my line. I want an output of 3 when X equals 1, but I want this term to vanish at X equals 5. And when X is 1, I need to counteract that. Plus, I want an output of 11. I want to vanish at x equals 1, but when x is 5, I need a term to counteract that. Uh, when x is uh, 1 or 5, I need 4. All right, there's the line. Does the trick. It's a pretty nasty line, uh, but it's really 11 fourths x minus 3 fourths x. That's really two x's. And I got a negative 11 fourths, and I have positive uh, 15 fourths. So that's uh, plus 4 fourths plus 1. The line is 2x plus 1. Uh, some interesting things can occur, and I'll leave these as maybe exercises. Uh, what happens, oh, let's get the right colored pen, if I give you a data set like this. Here's a quadratic. When x is 2, I'd like an output of 5. When x is 1, I'd like an output of 10. And when x is 2, I'd like an output of 15. Can you see that the formula should break down? There is no 
quadratic that works for this. But what happens if you try my formula? Uh, part two of my exercise, is there a quadratic in the reverse direction that fits this data? Maybe there is. What if I give you a set of data, say, uh, make this very obvious what's going on, when uh, y is 1, I want 2, when y is 4, I want 8, and when y is 10, I want 20. Does a quadratic fit that data? No, it's actually linear. But what if I try the technique? Do I get a linear equation popping out of that? Try it. So try writing a quadratic that works this way, using this technique, and I bet you'll find that a is 0 leaving you those terms. So even if you use this, this technique in a, an approach that's a little bit silly because you recognize it's linear, it won't fail you. There we are. Fit quadratics to any set of data you like from now on with ease. Thanks.